So let's talk about sub-additivity of measures. So imagine the following situation. You look at a union, a countable union of, um, well, let's call this I, of, uh, of sets UI, where you allow these sets UI to overlap. So maybe UI and UJ have some point in common. And then you ask, what about the measure mu of this union and what sub-additivity uh, tells you, well, to be precise, sigma sub-additivity. Uh, Additivity, okay. Um, having a hard time spelling this morning. Um, so, um, what this tells you is that the measure of this union of uh, overlapping sets is less than or equal to the sum. Again, from one to infinity of the measures of the sets ui and to prove this so this is true for every measure uh, just by uh, just by virtue of the axioms for a measure that we have uh, discussed in one of the last lectures um, but in case you haven't seen this, um, let me just remind you that for every measure, uh, we have the following as an axiom. If you have a disjoint union, and we denote a disjoint union of sets by this uh, sum sign, so i from 1 to infinity of ui. If this is a disjoint union of sets, meaning a union of sets where the sets don't overlap, then u of, um, I'm, I'm sorry, mu of this, so the measure of this, I hope you, uh, you can tell uh, when I'm writing mu and when I'm writing u, uh, because I have really bad handwriting. Uh, so, so so mu of this of this disjoint union is well it's just the sum i from 1 to infinity of the measures of the sets ui right so this is by assumption this is by how we define a measure this is true and now let's look back at what we want to prove this one here the only difference is that in this case that I have now marked with this green dot uh, arrow is that we allow the sets UI to overlap. So to prove this sigma sub-additivity, we want to reduce um, this to, or well, sort of reduce it to this the statement about the measure of uh, uh, of a union of non-overlapping sets. So to do this, we um, we do the following: we define um, we define non-overlapping sets. So let me think about how we should call them. Let's let's call them. Uh, U snake, <laughs> U wiggly line. So uh, U1 wiggly line is, well, it's just U1. And U2 is, uh, U2 wiggly line is U2 um, without U1. So remember U2 and U1 
might have an not, might have a non empty overlap and we take this overlap out and define u2 uh, weekly line uh, just to be what you get when you uh, look at u2 and you take every point out that is also in u1 and we continue in this fashion so let me write one more um, u3 weekly line is um, is defined to be u3 without u2 union uh, u1 and uh, to be general we write ui would be line uh, we define this to be well, just ui without uh, all the previous sets so without the union um, now, that, now now we have called this i let's call it j it's better um, um, without uh, the union of the uh, u of the sets ui right and what we accomplish by doing this is uh, if we now look at the union of these newly defined um, wiggly line sets we get the same union as uh, when we look at the union of the sets ui so um, the union let me write this down the union from one to infinity of the sets um, ui this is the same as the disjoint union of the sets uh, u i weekly line um, and note i've already already written it here note that these sets with this weekly line that they are uh, disjoint because well they are by uh, construction because what we have done to construct them is we have taken the overlap the intersection out so these are uh, disjoint by construction and of course their union is the same as the union of the sets ui so this means that the measure mu of uh, this union is the same as the measure of this disjoint union but now remember uh, this here uh, this line that we have for every measure uh, this tells us that mu of this disjoint union again is uh, is the sum uh, from uh, one to infinity of the mu's of the u i weekly line uh, sets and. Um, the uh, ui um, wiggly line sets uh, well these are uh, every one of these uh, is smaller than um, mu of ui and this is then also true for the sum from one to infinity uh, so let me uh, say this more clearly um, every one of these sets u i wiggly line is a subset of the set u i and uh, this by pro uh, this means by uh, properties of the measure that uh, mu of uh, ui wiggly line is for every i uh, less than or equal to mu of ui and this this means that this sum from one to infinity of mu of the ui wiggly lines is less than or equal to the sum of the mu i's of the ui and now if you look at 
our statement here that we wanted to prove, you see that going from here to here, we have we are we're done. We have, uh, we have uh, concluded the proof, and um, so that's that is uh, sub additivity. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If it was, um, feel free to uh, like and subscribe, and uh, see you in the next video.